In this guide, we will start with a short primer on the starting kit of the machinist, followed by going over all of the actions learned from level 30 to 50 in order. We will go over how each action is meant to be used and when applicable, the recommended way to use it. Please refer to the video in the top right corner for explanations of role actions specifically. Let's start with your 1-2-3 combo, split shot, slug shot and clean shot. All three generate heat gauge, which we will get back to in a bit. Clean shot is particularly important as, at this level, it also serves as your hardest hitting attack. When nothing else takes higher priority, you want to make sure to go through this 1-2-3 sequence as your weapon skills. Most of your other weapon skills don't cancel your combo, so it might be useful to know that you can leave a combo without building on it for 15 seconds before it cancels itself. Spread shot is your area of effect or AoE for short option. For two or more targets, spread shot is superior to your 1 2 3 combo. Spread shot does cancel your 1 2 3 combo, however, so if you can use clean shot, it is better than spread shot on two targets. On three or more targets, you should just use spread shot. Hot shot does not cancel your combo and does a decent amount of damage. For now, it is simply a weapon skill with a cooldown, which you should make use of whenever it is available. Now, let's talk about the heat gauge. Whenever you use certain actions, you generate 5 heat gauge, up to 100. These actions are Split Shot, Slug Shot, Clean Shot and Spread Shot. When you have at least 50 heat gauge, you have access to the ability Hypercharge. This action makes your single target weapon skills do 20 more potency worth of damage. Make sure to late weave it to make sure the 8 seconds cover at least 3 weapon skills due to the global recast time of 2.5 seconds. Abilities can be used while your global recast timer is ticking, but using any action always incurs an animation lock of about half a second when no other action can be issued. So try to make sure to use your abilities between weapon skill uses. This is known as weaving. It is usually possible to fit two abilities between two weapon skills. Late weaving is the concept of delaying an ability as long as possible after a weapon skill without delaying your next weapon skill to make sure the buff granted by the ability covers as many weapon skills as possible. If you want to learn more about weaving in general and much more, I would refer to the video in the top right corner. Now, let's look at some of your other abilities. Gauze Round is an ability that simply does immediate damage. It has two charges, so while you should use it on cooldown, as long as you have less than two charges, other cooldowns can take higher priority. Reassemble makes your next weapon skill guaranteed to be a critical direct hit, which means it will do a lot more damage. You should try to make sure this always is spent on clean shot for single target or spread shot for AoE. Before moving on to new actions, let's briefly cover positioning. As a ranged physical damage dealer job, the machinist has both great range and great mobility. Despite this, you should try to stick close to your group. In essence, if you have no good reason to stand far away from your target, it is better to get closer to your group as it will make it easier for your healer to heal you, for instance. With all that out of the way, let's talk about your level up actions. At level 35, you learn the weapon skill Heat Blast. This action does a couple of things. First. You can only use it when hypercharge is active. Second, its global recast timer is 1.5 seconds rather than 2.5 and this timer is unaffected by skill speed unlike normal weapon skills. Using it also reduces the cooldown of Gauss Round by 15 seconds. Due to the shorter recast timer, it is only possible to fit one ability after a use of Heat Blast. Because Heat Blast reduces the cooldown of Gauss Round, it is recommended that you try to make sure to use both charges of Gauss Round before using Hypercharge, and then making sure to spend extra Gauss Round charges during Hypercharge such that the cooldown reduction does not go to waste. If you properly late weave Hypercharge, it is always possible to fit 5 Heat Blasts in a Hypercharge window. If you don't late weave, it is still possible, but the timing of each blast has to be tighter. Since you can have as much as 100 heat gauge, you should try to delay hypercharge to make space to prioritize important cooldowns that can't wait as easily, such as hotshot. At level 40, you learn the abilities Rook Auto Turret and Rook Overdrive, and unlock the battery gauge. Let's focus on the battery gauge first. Clean Shot generates 10 battery gauge, while Hotshot generates 20 battery gauge, 
and you can hold up to 100. The Rook Auto Turret ability spends at minimum 50 battery gauge, but up to 100 battery gauge when used. This spawns a turret that shoots your enemies for you until it runs out of battery, after which it uses Rook Overload for a heavy hit. Rook Overdrive can force the turret to use Overload early, but this only means you get fewer shots in, so this should only be used at all if you know what you're doing, if you know the boss is going to become invulnerable or disappear for instance. The amount of attacks and potency of Overload is linearly dependent on the amount of battery gauge you spent on summoning the turret. What this means is that if you spend 100 battery gauge, the total amount of damage the turret will do in its lifetime is twice as much as if you used it with 50 battery gauge. As such, the most important factor is using it at a convenient time where you know the full value will be spent, or when allies give you damage increasing buffs, which your turret will also benefit from. The fact that Spreadshot does not produce battery gauge does not change anything in its usefulness it is still better than your 1-2-3 combo on two or more targets. At level 45, you learn the abilities Wildfire and Detonator. Wildfire is a long cooldown that applies an effect to your target that tracks your attacks on the enemy for the next 10 seconds. For every weapon skill you hit the target with in the duration, Wildfire will explode for 200 potency worth of damage. With the assistance of one regular weapon skill and five heat blasts, it is typically possible to fit up to six weapon skills in the wildfire window. This can be done either by late weaving wildfire, followed by a regular weapon skill, into late weaving hypercharge, into five heat blasts, or by using wildfire and then hypercharge in the same window and then doing five heat blasts, followed by a regular weapon skill at the end. Given the potency of wildfire, you should try to use it as much as you can. Reassemble does not affect Wildfire. Detonator replaces Wildfire for the duration of the ability and simply lets you detonate it early if you need it for some reason. Similarly to Rook Overdrive, you should only do this if you're absolutely sure about it. At level 50, you learn the ability Ricochet. This action, like Gauss Round, has two charges but also does some AoE damage around the target. Heat Blast will also reduce the cooldown of Ricochet by 15 seconds per use. So during hypercharges, it is important that all charges of both Gauss Round and Ricochet are spent. You should also make sure to alternate using Gauss Round and Ricochet during hypercharge, such that neither one refreshes completely. Ricochet should be used on cooldown just like Gauss Round. Let's round off by covering single target and AoE attack rotations. For single target, you want to make sure to use Hotshot as close to its cooldown as possible. Due to its cooldown scaling with skill speed, it is typically available on every 16th weapon skill, with a set of 5 heat blasts being equivalent to 3 regular weapon skills. Use Gauss Round and Ricochet on cooldown in between weapon skills. Remember, you can fit 2 abilities per weapon skill. Use your 1-2-3 combo Split Shot, Slug Shot and Clean Shot to generate battery and heat gauge. Make sure to use Reassemble on Clean Shot and as close to on cooldown as you can. When you have at least 50 battery gauge, you can use Rook Auto Turret to do extra damage. Wildfire should always be paired with a hypercharge window, so while it should be used as close to on cooldown as possible, make sure to always pair it with a hypercharge window. Additionally, unless you pair Wildfire directly with hypercharge, it should be late weaved. When paired with hypercharge, use Wildfire first. Try to always late weave hypercharges, followed by 5 heat blasts. Try your best to make sure you don't have any gauze round or ricochet charges when you enter hypercharge, and then alternate spending them during the hypercharge window so that the cooldown reduction isn't wasted. For 2 or more targets, you replace your 1-2-3 combo with split shot. In fact, you may not even want to use hot shot depending on circumstances, since its only benefit over split shot is the battery gauge gained. Reassemble should also be used on spread shot during AoE encounters. On 2 to 4 targets, you can use hypercharge and heat blasts on AoE, as the damage of heat blasts, combined with their faster fire rate and the gauze round and ricochet attacks will do more damage than spread shot. On 5 or more targets, you don't use hypercharge. Remember to make use of your roll actions such as head grace to interrupt interruptible spell casts. Watch out for the pulsing cast bar. Use Peloton while not in combat to assist with extra movement speed. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or anything to add, please leave a comment down below. Fun fact, 
Before Shadowbringers, Wildfire scaled with the amount of damage you did during its window, rather than the amount of weapon skills you used. This led to a lot of cooldown stacking back then, 